and infinite blessings, my beautiful people. Welcome to the new and improved The Authentic Hippie Podcast. Da, 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 da. Yes. This is so exciting. Yeah. So The Authentic Hippie Podcast, man, if you have followed my personal journey throughout the years, I have um, shifted so many ways. Originally, I had general commentary was the first name of my like first ever like podcast radio show, internet radio show. It was called General Commentary because nice. um, when I was a revolutionary, like heavy, heavy, mm-hmm. they called me the general, and then I got called Laura Mufasa. I had two names that were given to me. So Sorry. General Commentary was the first one. Um, then it switched to the Lions Den, and it stayed as a Lions Den for a couple years. And then I aligned with this beautiful black man, and you know we want to podcast together. We have a lot to say, a lot of dope-ass conversations. Um, I was very emotional about letting the Lions Den go as far as the name. I'm Mufasa Bastet. So the Lions Den was my baby, but as a creative, um, sometimes you have to really... Like know when it's time to end something and move to the next phase and like just just give honor to it. So... um, you know, then I, I found this amazing black male who finally crossed paths after all this time, and uh, Sir Thelonious decided yeah, I mean, to be a co-host. Indeed, I did, and I thank you for having me once again. Uh, yeah, I started out with the Lions Den for a few episodes, and then switched over to us branding the Authentic Hippie Podcast, and. It's been beautiful. <laughs> Those two lines in episodes probably won't ever hit the internet, yeah. so don't worry about it. <laughs> they, they were really, were really good, really, really good. But uh, yeah, may, maybe like in, in a hidden folder, I might release it without without telling her. But yeah, I go by the mighty name of Sir Thelonious. I am born and raised in North New Jersey. I am the MC, poet, singer, philanthropist, uh, motivational speaker, uh, sound engineer, videographer, photographer. Abstract liver and lover of life. You feel me? I'm a father out here, and I'm a strong black man uh, with a strong black woman <laughs> who happens to be my partner. Mm. And I am grateful and gracious to be with you mm. and to be with the people. <laughs> and 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 yes. more and more. Yeah, I'm super more. excited. Um, so with Authentic Hippie, if you don't know, um, the brand itself is about holistic wellness. That is something that is very important to us um, as our lifestyle, um, especially as Black people. We're very committed to doing better. <laughs> like That's really it, like just doing better because uh, we've seen the mistakes that our elders have made, not only in our own families, but just in general, in large Black people. We've learned a lot. We've hurt a lot. Um and being responsible or choosing to be responsible for the evolution of ourselves, our future children, um, current children, yeah. you know, like it's it's important to us. So the brand is about wellness. Uh, we offer products, services, and events, yeah. and a podcast. And this is the podcast. Say that, say that. Yeah! So you'll be able to uh, listen to the podcast um, via... Spotify, Apple Music. Music. Those are the two that we know for sure. And there's probably a bunch of other places that y'all don't even listen to podcasts on, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely going to be more than (laughs) Apple Music and Spotify, but I guess those are the two that y'all need to know. Yeah. That everybody does know. So let's focus on those two. Yeah. And interaction is very important to us as well. Um, Shout out to Instagram. Woo! We love y'all. Um, Facebook, y'all lit. Um, and then if you ever want to be a part of the show, we're definitely uh, want to have guests. We want to do segments um, on black couples. That's a yeah. big, big thing for us. So if you are a black couple partnership and you want to share your story, we are LGBTQAI plus friendly. So make right. sure that all black couples, no matter what you look like, no matter what your story, um, we want to hear about your longevity, your struggles. Um, Cause this is hard for us. <laughs> yeah, we look good, but listen, I was crying ugly tears a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's the truth. Like, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was too. Yeah, don't let it blow. Yeah. It was out here. It was hurt. It's hard. We was emotional out here. Emotional. <laughs> I can't let it go. Right. It's hard, yo. So even in this artist, um, uh, wellness owner, business owners, all that jazz. All that jazz. We want to hear um, from you, connect to you. So definitely email us at authentichippy at gmail.com. Um, you can also reach us via phone. You can call, leave a message. You can text uh, 347-998-8903. 
the end of the day. Did I miss any intro? I think, I think that was it. I think you had everything on the head. I have my, my list right here. So. Oh yeah, I mean, but you was you was you were swaying on that, John. So you good, you good. Swag, and surf, hey. swag, get on surfing. Shout out to Atlanta. Yeah, I still haven't been today. <gasps> never been today. No, never. You never been to Atlanta. I've never been to Atlanta. Please, oh, hey y'all. <laughs> How you never been to Atlanta? You black? I don't know. That's weird. North Carolina, Virginia, but never Atlanta. You know what's interesting? Like, I haven't been to Atlanta like as an adult. I don't like. Well, no, that's not true. I haven't been since I was like twenty three. I think twenty two mm-hmm. or twenty three. So I'm not even sure what my experience in Atlanta would be like now. I sure. definitely want to go, but like, I really just want to go to see my friends in my college and high school. Yeah, like, yeah. but I wonder what y'all, what we sipping, what y'all sipping on. Shout out to the uh, Rhythm and Brews podcast. What you sipping on? Um, this is lemongrass, ginger, peach turmeric and honey tea yeah a whole bunch because again wellness is wellness is life life is wellness all right so let's jump into the first segment ready (laughs) rebel rants what are we talking about? So, Rebel Rants, let me just tell them what it is. Okay. So, yeah. Rebel Rants is one of my, I think it's our, one of our favorite yeah, segments. Yeah, yeah. All our segments are favorite segments. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, Rebel Rants is just us getting our frustrations off our chest in regards to just the world. Yeah. I often feel as if I view things in a way that others, it's like, do y'all see what's going on or am I bugging? Like, or I feel like sometimes people have the same thoughts as me, but don't have anyone that's like saying it out loud. So they don't like have anyone to connect to about it. So Rebel Rants is like really like just us talking our shit. You may or may not agree with it. We might not even agree with each other, Um, but it's just you know, being able to put a different perspective about the world, mainly political, um, but just the world, society, the matrix, if you will. Yeah. So it's voting season. Yeah. I believe tomorrow is the voting day. Maybe. People have been early voting, but early I believe voting. tomorrow is the day like to vote. The actual day. I'm not really 100% sure because I don't vote, but like I do believe that voting season is like tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to bring up, did you did you watch the video? Did I, 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 saw, I saw a clip of it, and then I also saw like a, uh, one of my friends posted on IG saying like, oh, when black folks doing this, y'all had, y'all had a problem with white folks do it. So I saw, I saw a little bit of it. Okay, so for those who may or may not know, there's a video that is circulating, circulating around the internet right now of a group of Trump supporters um, that have like basically created like a barricade around um, a Biden Harris like yeah. bus. I'm not really sure if they were on the bus or like what that was, but like they created like a barricade around it. They were armed, had their flags out, like fucking just redneck, like just crazy shit. Yeah. Um, and it's just because it's so not a part of my reality. It's just very interesting when I see stuff like that because it always triggers me back to. I don't know if y'all seen the documentary. Uh. uh Social, social dilemma. Yeah, social dilemma. And in social dilemma, they specifically the creators of Facebook, and they literally said they knew that the algorithms, the way that what they were doing, the way they were doing it, they knew that it was going to create a potential civil war or civil unrest, and they did it anyway. Yeah. They, they in the in the document that was the one takeaway for me that I had. Now whatever their agenda is for actually saying it, I don't know. I don't really care, but they said it. And so in the documentary Social Dilemma, they literally say we knew that this was going to create a, a civil unrest or civil war or potential civil war, and we did it anyway. Yeah. And then to see you know where, regardless if you want to vote don't want to vote, if you want to vote for Trump, if you want to vote for Biden, if you want to vote for uh, Independent, if you want to vote for Yeezy, it doesn't matter. But we should be able to do that without violence. Like, it's like, yo, like, y'all are really about to run people off the road with your guns and your flags and your KKK vibes because 
of what exactly? I don't know, like just trying to keep someone in office. Um, it shouldn't be that deep to a degree when you're like about to start a riot, about to start, like we said, a civil war in regards to just trying to have a specific person in the office. And I don't even, I don't even recall if it was like, I know it was some type of racial, like racist of like feelings and uproar, even when um, Barack Obama went into the office for the first time. But I don't think it was like this hectic. No, it wasn't. Well, it's just the, the phones, again, the, the phones and the algorithms, yeah. it, it has driven it up. Like, driven, yeah. driven, like, there's also another documentary called Hacked. Like, I keep telling you, you gotta watch Hacked. Like, you really gotta watch Hacked. That's another one where they just talk about how they use the out, like, this is a digital, um, a digital data company in England or in London, like over in Europe. Yeah. They used the data that they collect on us to basically put out specific propaganda for your region and your area to influence mm-hmm. your thoughts. And that is what really drove for Trump to be elected. Yeah. And so, again, when it comes to the social media, the data, our digital footprint, how it's being manipulated and shifted in shape. Like, they're literally influencing a social... Like, they're creating a... Like, it's a social engineered society. Like, how much of it is our actual thought? And it's now it's it's gone beyond what are our our thoughts, but now it's influencing behavior. Exactly. To the point of a potential civil war that none of us are prepared for. I don't care how black intellectual revolutionary I am. If a war, a civil war breaks out in 20, like next year, I mean, I might get, I might be prepared because of who I am, but, and who we are together, I might be prepared. But as of right now, I live in an apartment building with someone else's electricity Someone else. I still went to the grocery store today. You know, we yeah. we are buying food still. still. We're still using the internet still. Like still. I'm not ready to be 100 percent in Civil War, Walking Dead vibes. Yeah, like a, <laughs> a, a, a apocalypse vibes. Apocalypse yeah. vibes. Like yeah. we keep. It's like it's almost like white people like the 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 tech. And this is not all white people, but like tech, the tech industry specifically. Yeah. It's as if they have this desire to really manifest the apocalypse. They want to see that happen. Yeah. It's kind of like they know something that we don't know and then things are just starting to like unravel like and just go out of control because nobody really has control over like their train of thought or like even if they're having pure thought to a point where right. they even know what the hell they're doing. Right. They're just like following command and social media like even we took a hiatus from social media last last month because we were working on things to set forth like within November and beyond but even within that time like we didn't feel like we needed to go back to our phones we didn't feel yeah, like we no. needed to be back but we know the importance of outreach and like also what we're doing to like help people in regards of what they need to know what they yeah. need to feel but it, it's so fucking crazy because everybody else you can't hold them accountable for what they should know and what they don't know because especially what they're influenced by yeah but it's just for me it's like i get how powerful the almighty social media is Mm -hmm. but like what about your humanity people don't care what the fuck is up with humanity my thing is like bro what's good with humanity my nigga like you don't want to say that and i think this is this is why black people are so chill right now like black folks we out here doing yoga supporting each other eating vegan like being cute on camera like we out here just like chilling because in our minds we are connected to nature and like it's interesting to see that like white people it's you know the, the white experience is like this Destruction. It is like the destruction of like what America has been. Yeah. But then simultaneously, black people are con- are like thriving right now at the same time, and it makes me wonder: like, are we like kind of psyching ourselves out? Like, are we like we're like doing the yoga and we're yeah. like we're well and we're happy? But like in my mind, I was always doing or I am doing this stuff, knowing that I'm still a warrior and that yeah. I may still have to like really be in the midst of a war like that's that's the mind that i have had like i know and believe that there are bunkers that they got underneath the ground whereas they if they drop a bomb they gonna be good like you know but we on the other hand don't even talk to our family and that's another thing that's another thing and and to go back on that point i think it's a bit of both i think it's a a point of like black folk really tapping into 
their higher beings and like their their power beings of knowing that shit can go down at any given second. So let me be let me be prepared right. mentally, emotionally, physically right. to get ready. But also, it's a lot of people who are doing those same things that's kind of tapping out, They're like zoning out into their own. That's own what existence. see, and that's the thing that I see because I've been I will say I've been heavily invested in the journey since 2015. Yeah. Like, and this is like because of my folks in Brooklyn, um, folks in Harlem, folks in Connecticut. Um, Massachusetts, like this this region, this trust, you know, this this region, even some people in Jersey and Newark, like but I, I feel like people kind of um because stuff wasn't really happening directly to us anymore, because when Trump was getting elected, it was like, oh my God, like you know, we were all like all, like being serious on like being on alert. Yeah. And then we kind of got comfortable, we're good, like everybody's happy, shea butted up, yeah. you know, our music is reflecting us now, like we're seeing ourselves in ads and, and whatever. So it's just this weird thing where like I'm not necessarily trying to create a panic or, or of any sort. Sort, but it's also like, do we have the awareness and mindfulness that we need in order to know when we need to unplug and like really do things in real time outside of, yeah. you know, social media? And especially because our elders are not aware in the way that we are, our generation, like, you know, the 40s and 50 year olds, some of them are, but largely they're not. Yeah. And, you know, they still got opinions about stuff that really is irrelevant. That's true. But like, what are we doing to actually be able to sustain our families period and I feel like there's still we repeatedly talk about this but I still think that even in the midst of all the yoga and whatever yeah. black people still haven't really accepted that this is America like yeah. this is a business this is a corporation you know this is you know the white hedonistic playland and we just happen to be here yeah. you know but like and this is our land and we are you know we want to say we're moors or whatever that's fine but like are we studying are we preparing are we using our time wisely because at the end of the day they're still gonna do they got their guns they got yeah. their bunkers they got you know they food supply they got yeah. what they farmland they good we the ones in the hood and urban cities on their grid gonna be asked to fuck out when they out here playing kill the nigga. That's yeah, shit, the purge. The purge. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, I'm not anyway. <laughs> that's that's why it's called Rebel Rants. Good rant. Good rant. Good rant. Sean Elliott said G- GMO reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's his Legendary name. Tate, uh, he's in MIA. He's yeah. in Miami. He said, Miami. This is super duper dope. Say that. Yeah. Super duper dope, dude. Much love. Thanks, Much bro. Love. Fucking love you, bro. All day, man. Is up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, I was playing your music before we started. Definitely this was. Show, bro. You already know the vibes. Um, so you want to jump into the next segment? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, so we want to jump into the next segment. That is uh, a book review. So your beloved has uh, been getting his read on. Um, one thing that, yeah, definitely because of her. <laughs> so as a writer, as a poet, as an artist, what have you, I find myself writing more than I read. And this beautiful woman reminded me that a good writer. I said, no, this is how, this is how I said it. Yeah, she did. She did. <laughs> I'm not gonna front. I was talking to him crazy sometimes. I'm like, so Leo shit. Yeah, I'm listening. How you a writer but you don't read? Mm-hmm. Like I literally said it straight like that. Like how you a reader but you don't read? And he was like, Yeah, you right. It be like that sometimes. I mean, again, you you get caught up in your own creativity to a point where sometimes you don't even allow other people's influence in regards to books or like just gaining more knowledge. Because sometimes you get to a point where you feel like you know a lot. And sometimes you get complacent in regards of like you just know enough, but you exactly. never. What's up, King? You never, you never know too much. It's like you never should put yourself in a place where you can't ask a question. You never should put yourself in a place or state of mind where it's like you can't learn anything new. So I love to learn. So it's like, well, let me let me read a little bit more. Let me get back into that zone because I haven't really been reading since like college days. And- yeah, that's what it, that's what another thing about it is too. It's hard. Like me now that I'm back in school, yeah. um, I don't read as much for leisure as I used to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you definitely, um, I think that we associate reading with school 
And if you have an issue with academia in school and you don't read, and it's like, bruh, nah, you still gotta read. Cause they, one, I don't know who it was, but it was a wise black elder that said, if you wanna hide something from a Negro, put it in a book. And ever since then, which I heard that when I was a child, and I do love to read anyway. I got that Harry Potter tattoo and all that, John, but you know, you gotta read. Shit is in the books. It's not on the internet, it's in the books. That's so true. I'm a future librarian, actually kind of a current librarian. I have yeah, y'all don't over a yeah, hundred and I have over a hundred and fifty books, if not more. I would say more for sure. I would say more. Yeah, I have a lot of books. So anyway, so um uh you know, I handed my man a book because that's what <laughs> queens do. So queens do <laughs> they can, you feel me? Um, so what did I hand you? So she handed me the ways of the superior man. Uh, uh, peace to the king. I'm saying his name wrong. David Dita. David Dita. David Dita. Uh, yeah, the ways of a superior man. Listen, uh, is said, come through Palo Santo. You already know. Yeah, vibes. Uh, vibes. Yeah. So this is this is an interesting read. Definitely uh, something worth reading. This is where you at? Like a, uh, like a, yeah. Where have I been? So you like he like a third of the way. I've already read this book. I've read this book uh, once. That's all I need. <laughs> I might read it again. I'm not sure, but I read it once. <laughs> but he's about a third of the way through. Yeah, third of the way through. Um, definitely some good information in there. A lot of stuff in there is just like kind of like I see how that may work for you, but that don't work for all men. But also just like kind of like given the circumstance of uh, just knowing like the difference of what works for you, what works for another man, uh, the ways of how you think as a man, as a black man, uh, just ways of like elevating yourself and making yourself a better person, a better human and a better man. So it's a good read thus far. It's a a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women work and sexual desire. Yeah. So that itself is just interesting because it's like... Like, I don't want to master a woman. I ain't trying to do that. And, and to- it's really impossible to master a woman anyway, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good book. What did you think about it, Sean? What did you think about it? So for me, I liked it because it one of the things that it took away from for me mm-hmm. is it helped me to understand the type of woman that I am and why I was attracting a certain types of men that I was reading or attracting. Gotcha. gotcha. Or I, was, I shouldn't say, I hate attract, saying attracting. Mm-hmm. The type of men that I was, I found myself in pattern with. I realized what that yeah. what, what that was about, and understanding that like me being mission driven, fiery, passionate, um, like just the go getter, that's not the same personality as like the man who is used to his mama taking care of him and shit, you know. But but it's interesting too because with us, I feel like I'm the more like if we're going to use alpha and beta, like, well, I don't even like using beta in terms of men, but like, I feel like I'm an alpha personality. And as far as like, as a woman, like I'm not, I, I'm learning to be more soft and delicate. And I think I'm feminine in my own way, For sure. but I definitely feel like I'm aggressive. And that's something that men who are controlling yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't appreciate or understand. Not real tough. And this helped me to like to realize that and figure that out. Yeah, because all because and I'm glad you said soft versus submissive. Because even even women, um, if they're like aggressive or something like that, or if, even if they're not, you try to take on a submissive role, you don't have to be submissive because like no man really wants a submissive woman. I don't know what men out there have tricked these women to think that you want a submissive woman. You know that's not true. We want a strong, powerful woman that's going to stand on her own, but also know how to be supported and also work with your yeah. partner versus just like being so misindependent. Right. Then that's it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's definitely like there's there's this process of like understanding who your partner. Well, first of all, understanding what you need in a partner because you got to understand yourself first. That's right. So it's like I feel like a lot of women have spent time wanting to be like the pick me, like choose me. Like they just want to be chose, yeah. and it's not enough to just be chosen, man or woman. You got to know what you bring into the table and how it works together and et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, I feel like the book, this this book specifically helped me to see like the man, like the difference between the man who like has a focus and has a vision versus the man who doesn't and like just goes to work and then comes home like sits on the couch. Like I definitely realized the difference between those two types and why like I, or why those types liked me. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, versus like finding and understanding like healthier ways of being, especially coming from someone that like 
I didn't necessarily see healthy men growing up or healthy couples. Like I didn't really see that. So this was one of the books that helped me to understand and actually accept the type of woman that I am and knowing that there is a type of man that's out there. I just have to make sure I tune my eyes to be able to understand it and not compromise like who I am in the exactly. midst of that. It was again, the, the, the man who connects to a woman for who she is and what she brings forth is not a woman that we want to have to compromise anything about themselves. Right. We want you to be right. pure in who you are, right. fully trust who you are and don't adapt or don't change to a setting that you want a, a man to take you on. Yeah. But it's not true to who you are. Yeah. And it's kind of like going to the club and then like getting the guy to buy you a drink. And then um, you actually spend time with the guy, but then you don't, you're not, you may not even really be into what he's into because you yeah. just wanted to drink at the bar. Facts. But also just like be real with yourself. Yeah. Just really be real with yourself before you even take a chance on like wanting to know how to be with someone. Know how to be with yourself first. Yeah. Before you even like take that risk. But I think being with you has definitely helped me to uh, understand that, like, you someone who genuinely loves you is not going to ask you to change. Like, I feel like you're the first time that I've experienced, like, a true unconditional love. And, yeah. Oh, God. Here you go. Why she going to do that? Why she going to do that to me, y'all? Why she going to do that to me? We're recording, man. Come on, man. Continue, though. No, but seriously, so, like, you really helped me to see that a man who genuinely loves you, is interested in you, supports you, sees you, appreciates your vision, is not going to ask you to change, because then that's not even the person that you are. Like, if you ask somebody to change, but then you claim you love them, that don't make no sense. That's not actual love. It's not love. That goes back to control. Just being able to control someone for what you want them to be, but it's still not somebody that you even want to be with. Right. You You want to make them what you want them to be. That's definitely not yeah but but this goes into the point of today's topic we're gonna pause it transition but what is him saying right there a real man let me say hold on hold on let me let me go down a real man give us your comments because we're definitely reading them a real man understands a powerful woman men that desire submissive women have a power dynamic exactly and yeah that's just that's a fact and i think that goes back to them not just they need to work out some stuff within themselves because listen Men, whatever. I love you. I love my men. So I'm not even going to say nothing. Don has entered the chat. Hello, Don. Peace, King. That Peace to the Don. The That's a great culture. name. Peace to the Don. Don. Yeah, Don Crippen. That's fine. Don Crippen. That's Liddy. That's fire, bro, bro. Um, word. So, oh, my cousin put a little, put a little emotional heart. I'm uh, sure she heard me say you the first time I experienced that condition. Uh, hey, that's cousin. Kim. That's oh, Kim. That's, that's, that's the one that saved our relationship. I owe you a lot. Yo, I can't wait to get If it wasn't for Cam, we wouldn't, yeah, we, we <laughs> we wouldn't be here. This yeah, podcast yeah. wouldn't be happening. That's Shout out right. to Cam. Shout, Shout out, out to Cam. Caribbean Vibes. If you're in Pittsburgh, go make sure you get to the food truck. Yeah, get you some Jamaican food because my cousin Cam cook, honey. Cam, you saved my relationship. I love you, love. <laughs> <laughs> So today's topic. Mm. Cancel. Cancel cuffing season. Mm-hmm. Everybody's talking about canceling shit and canceling people, but I don't really think we'd be like, think, like, let's cancel some important shit. Yeah. All right. Let's cancel cuffing season. Yeah. I yeah. think it's stupid. It's fucking, yeah. It makes and this is sense. not only, this is not just because I'm in a relationship now. I thought it was stupid prior to being in a relationship. I never had people around just because it was cold outside. I yeah. never did that. Yeah. I never did that either. I mean, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you for like specific reasons, but it wasn't just because it's cold. I need to even cold. if I fuck with you just because I fuck you. Mm. I I was honest about it. There you go. I wasn't just having you. It's like no, you were here yeah. because we are having sex. Yeah, like you knew the intention. Like you, <laughs> knew, you knew the vibes. <laughs> like it wasn't questionable. All intentions were very clear. Yeah. Seems like everyone's in a relationship. Uh, Coming season, come is... season for the broke. For no, the broke well, people. that that so that's the whole that's the point. That part, I feel that like cuffing season definitely is pe- for people who a have no vision, yeah, 
They have nothing that they're working on. Mm. And you're just lonely and refuse to acknowledge that you were the cause of your own loneliness. Yeah. It's people who have like a big fear of committing. And not even just committed to relationship, just commitment, period. Like to something. To something. Yeah. To someone. Like even to themselves. It's just like they they fuel on other people and fuel on other people's like things rather than actually being fueled by what they can possess for their own selves. Yeah. And it's why it's, it's kind of like tax season. Like uh when when the dudes, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a little secret out. Uh dudes be going for the for the for the big girls in tax season. Because you mean girls that are heavier? Yeah, heavier girls. Why? Because they think they're gonna get all their tax money. But what the girl's weight got to do with her tax money? Listen, because they 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 come to think that the <laughs> what bigger, are you saying to me right now? They come to think that the bigger girls are more vulnerable because when they they're get playing there, on their potential insecurity that yeah, might not even be there. Yeah, that has always been a thing, and it's fucked up. Yeah, so tax season is not that far from cover season; it's just more diabolical on one end. If that's true, I I just I don't even have any I don't know. But I I I feel same issues with the big girls, yeah. Yeah, that's always been a thing. So guys really go and choose big girls because is this a speak? This is a real thing. This is a real like she knew to this. This is a real thing. Dudes have been doing this for a while. I've never been that guy. Well, you know what? <laughs> I will say, I, I, I wasn't the person that was getting used for that, but I definitely know for a fact that men, now that I'm like more stronger and confident in myself, yes. I know for a fact there have been men along my journey who tried to use me because of whatever they thought was going on in my situation. They thought that I was weaker or you know, going through a low point or yeah. whatever, and they tried to use that for their advantage. So I definitely understand that that's a... I do know that concept, yeah. but just, I guess, like, it feels like it's such a predator, like, predator-prey manipulation. Yeah. That's ugly. That's yeah. super ugly. Do niggas even put in rap songs? Like, this This has been, like, a cult... This is culture. Like... This is a well-known thing. Like since I was a kid, I knew about this. Like in the nineties, like the tax season come up. Yeah. Oh. And you get a big girl, take all the money in tax season, like income tax season. Yeah. yeah you take all the money. Yeah. See. Yeah. I, I feel like it's there's that's that's just twisted, yo. <laughs> the broke dudes who can't do anything for themselves, right? And, yeah. that's, and that, that's well, that goes back to what, the cuffing season thing. It's just like at some point, like. You have to be responsible for your energy and like yeah. what you're putting out into the world. Like, that's true. That's true. why? And like, do you feel good as a bum ass nigga? Like, I or a bum ass bitch? Like, you that's like true. really out here like laid up with somebody like because they got you know money and whatever. And like, I know there was periods in my life where like. I knew I was with somebody because they could help me with what I was going through, but I was very honest about it. Yeah. Very tra- like I never was like on some. I think the difference between the difference for it for me is like the intentions not being stated. Yeah, sure. Like if you're on some like sneaky shit, that's that's annoying. But like if everybody knows what's up and they all agree, yeah. then that's something to you know. Consenting adults, what you do is what you do. But this like sneaking around, yeah, like manipulating, plotting. You know, trying to find the big girl and then mm-hmm. going like that's the shit that like gets on my nerves. Wow. And then to do it with like, say for example, like a man, like to do it making her think that you want to be with her, yeah. and then come to find out you don't want to be with her, you just wanted to get through the winter with her. Like that's when it's like, yo, that's fucked up. Really fucked up. Really. Because you like to to for someone like to really think that like. I want, like, I want to be with them. They want to be with me, and like, we're here together. Like, we're doing this thing, and it's like, no, it's just for the season. Yeah. Like, that's fucked up. But then also, it becomes so fun. But some people just accept it, even if subconsciously they they try to make them feel themselves feel like that person really wants to be with them or is really engaging with them. Sometimes they know in their minds that it's like this shit ain't real. But I'm gonna just also enjoy it because at least I finally have somebody for right now. Some people just settle in that way too. Especially if you've been lonely for a long time. Like, some people just settle for that, too. Uh, do you think that people admit to themselves that they actually want a relationship, but they just feel like they're not going to get it? Mm. I think yes or no. 
I think I think people who are really real with themselves, like when nobody else is around, for sure. But I think people still live in denial. Not at all. Because they're not even thinking in that way. Because but because the thing is nobody wants to be lonely. Nobody wants to be lonely. But also that doesn't always mean that they want to be in a relationship. Nobody wants to be lonely, but that doesn't mean they want to be in a relationship. Yeah. But they don't have to be in a relationship if you're just yeah. being honest. Yeah. My thing is about, it's about honesty and communication. And I feel like I don't understand why us intellectual ass humans have such an issue with honest communication. Mm -hmm. That's why I named the brand Authentic Hippie from the beginning, because it's like authenticity is really the only thing that is required in, in life. That's real. Just be real. That's it. You can be, because we all know that we're all not perfect. Yeah. Right, everybody doesn't expect you to be perfect. We know you're going to make mistakes. You know that you're to be human is to be flawed. Yeah. So be real about your flaws. Like yeah. be real about your shit, so that I can then decide how I want to move, and then we can all just live in harmony or not. That's true. Because I don't fuck with you, or I do fuck with you because I'm settling too. Yeah. But at least let let's just be honest about it. I don't understand why honesty is such a hard thing for adults. I don't know. I mean, I've had my my own journey with that, as you know, and. Honesty is, I've always uh, pictured myself as being like a very honest and open person. But the thing with me is that sometimes I don't display full transparency as I should. And it's not because I don't want to. At, at times, I don't tell like the full story as right. if I think that you may get it already for what it is, rather than me having to break it down like bit by bit, piece by piece, telling you every little detail of something. See, I'm an over communicator. I, yeah. I say every, I, like, I don't, I'm not going to assume what you do or do not know. I'm not going to assume you have the same belief system as me. Even if we have a lot of, because I've run into situations with, especially with men, where like, I'm like, oh, you got locks. You read the same books. You eat the same way that I do. You like the same music that I do. But then at the fundamental core of it, you don't, you're not as committed to helping our people. You're not as dedicated to making sure your mama is straight. You don't really give a fuck about like, you know, the kids that you, like you claimed you did. And, you know, you you was out there marching in the streets and screaming and whatever at the protest, but then when you came home, you ate your like you know bacon egg and cheese and whatever. Like I feel like people are a lot of people live and walk in contradiction, and I learned that oh, yeah. by being a part of the con quote unquote conscious community. Conscious community, the same thing, same thing. Like so, that's when I was like, oh, like I can't be laid up with these quote unquote conscious niggas because they just as bad as the at least at least the hood nigga is like. Yeah authentically the hood nigga like that's who he is so I can't be like and he doesn't mind that but the conscious nigga is he, to me it's even worse because it's like again you're not being fully transparent about who you are like the yeah. ego is just all over the place yeah. and it's even more so because now you have the wisdom to know that you are a god yeah Right, so I'm a god. Hear me roar, but yet, like again, like you still eating whatever, and you like slapping bitches in, in the house and shit. Like yeah. you're still doing like messed up stuff, and then you know, women and men, everybody, you know, getting hurt around yeah. it just because we're not being honest. I don't get that because I think a lot of people get stuck in character, like who they're trying to portray versus like who they really are. Right, the times on the line, and when they're like um, when they're called down for it. Or when somebody sees that through them, it's like, oh, shit. Right. Yeah, a lot of people just get stuck in character and don't even admit that to themselves. Because they've been in character for so long, they don't even know that they're in character. And that's why I always say that America is an insane asylum. Yeah, for sure. For sure. People don't even know they playing. Cognitive dissonance is very real. Yeah, that's true. Cognitive is... I don't know what cognitive dissonance... Cognitive dissonance is where, like... You don't even know and you don't want to know yeah. the truth about yourself, even though you know the truth. That's what that's the part that's like weird. It's like yeah. you know you're doing some messed up stuff. You know it's messed up. You know that you're doing it, but in, but then at the same time, you don't believe you're a messed up person. Mm -hmm. Which you might not be. Yeah. Or as messed up. Or as, yeah. but you're still doing it and you're choosing not to accept this part of yourself because you don't want to see it, yeah. but you're still doing it and you're still benefiting from doing it. And you know that you are. It's just, it's twi the brain does some really yeah. twisted things if yeah. you let it. Yeah, that's true. The the, the mind is in a spotless wonderland because <laughs> it, it can go to so many different ranges. 
And at the same time, you can make yourself believe so many things that you know are not true. But again, if you've been saying these things or like living in this facade for so long, you can't even tell. You can't even remember like, oh shit, was that a lie? <laughs> right. Again, like, is that really me or is that not? Like, right. Did I really do that or right. did I not? Right. You can't even right. tell me. Right. Yeah, I, I think that that's the thing for me that I want to, why I encourage mindfulness above all, yeah. um, why I encourage um, just self-reflection, journaling, um, meditation, definitely cleaning how you're eating so that you can be better in tune with your intuition. Yeah. Um, because I think that the thing that will really help all of humanity, like just straight up all of humanity is to be able to be real with themselves about who they are and decide who they want to be. And whatever that vision is, just live it out until the day is done. Indeed. Because again, that goes back to what we were saying earlier about like, what is your original thought and what is being influenced by, you know, outside things. And I feel like the way for you to really, even if, cause I feel like I'm inspired by like shit, Tyra Banks and Rihanna and like all these things were like pieces and clues to help me create the version of self that I wanted to experience yeah. in my life. It's alchemy. Yeah. Um, but you have to at least be in tune with your vision for yourself first yeah. and then do that and then align with others so that you know it's like oh like you you are part this will help this or you're a part of this or whatever but like if you don't have an authentic identity that you created for yourself an authentic mm -hmm. mission that you created for yourself by yourself regardless of your family regardless of trauma mm -hmm. regardless of whatever like something that you are working towards we're gonna be out here fucked up humanity's gonna be out here fucked up because everybody's just out here just willy nilly yeah. with no real goal and those of us that have goals we're look at, looked at as the great ones but it's like we're not really that great it's just we focused our energy into doing something that is going to be great yeah. but we're still flawed Every, again everybody's flawed but at least like there's something that we can work on that's true that's true the, the worst thing for an imperfect person is for someone to make them feel like they are perfect. Right. Like you're looking at them in a perfect lens or through a perfect view. It's like we all make mistakes. We all go through the bullshit. We all put each other through bullshit. But that doesn't mean that if you're not looking to make yourself better, then you don't have like any value. You always have to know that you can always get through what you're going through. You can always be a better person. You can always have a different type of insight and outlook on life and just even what you're trying to get to. Right. You have to be focused. You have to like sometimes with a tunnel vision thing too. Right. Sometimes you have to be selfish to not be selfish. Yeah. Even in that regard. So Facts. I think people just have to really take hold of their own truth, their own identity and not be afraid of what other people think about it. Because yeah. that's what holds a lot of people back too. Thinking that like, oh, if I show you my true self, and you're not gonna fuck with me anymore. But also, don't even care about people fucking with you. You should rather, you should care more about if you, you fuck with, with you. you. Like <laughs> that's the thing. Like that's the thing. Like y'all ain't gotta like me because I like me. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Nah, for real. Though. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> well, and also that's how you can determine what's a real relationship and what's not. Yeah, yeah. But with your friendships, your connections, your network, your you know business opportunities, all that stuff. Like I feel like I was better able to navigate those things when I was very clear about my, who I was, the love I give myself, yeah. then I knew if you don't treat me as good as I treat myself, then no, I'm good. That's right. That's how it's supposed to be. Cancel cuffing season. It's stupid. Cancel cuffing season. Life is too serious. And the, and the time that we're in right now is too serious. Yeah. If you're still doing that shit in 2020, bruh. Yeah. Stop being a leech. Sexual energy is too serious. That's another episode, mm -hmm. but like sexual that. energy is way too serious to just be fucking anybody all willy nilly, especially now. Like, nah. Anywho. Baby, we got through um the topic. Oh, we did. Yeah, we we at the end of the show. Damn, already? Mm-hmm. That was really yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah, we got like that's seven minutes on Facebook. We got seven minutes left on Facebook. Well, okay. I don't know how long Facebook stream is, but seven more minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, if you got any questions, comments, send them to us Indeed. both ways um, both so ways. we can answer them before we end it. But we're going to give y'all the wrap up. Um, 
Authentic Hippie. Authentic Hippie. Products. Mm -hmm. We got clothing because you see how swaggy we is. Uh, this is your own t-shirt brand. This is my t-shirt from Sage. Shout out to my son Sage. So this name came before my son, <laughs> but this is mainly a reason why I named my son Sage. But I'll be yeah, I wouldn't yeah. really say that that's for your son because then my well, mom might start asking for residuals. Oh, that's a fit. <laughs> Yeah, so be sage, right? It's just literally like be peace, be jazz, be love, be free, be sage. Be sage. Be sage. Um, so products, uh, we're going to have hippie clothing uh, services. We're redoing the website right now yeah. with um, our items. Um, you know, I got some head wraps and the graphic tees, the jewelry, the accessories. I make custom waist beads and bracelets and all kinds of just, just hippie to hippie swag. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to have that in the store. Um, services such as I'm a certified life coach. Um, so life coaching, family mediation, that's a really big thing that I'm, we are excited about doing. Um, we have a very serious commitment to helping rebuild the black family. Um, I know that a lot of us hippies, we are the black sheep. Um, we kind of feel as if we're disconnected from our families. Um, and more, a lot of this connection is really just because we haven't been, we haven't had or haven't found a way to have these tough conversations. Um, a lot of our elders are stubborn. They are in their ways, but we still have to try because regardless, they are our family. Um, but both of us are really good at straight talk and we're not afraid of old people, such as old black right. people. Right. Um, so if, you know, film mediation is going to be a service that we're definitely providing, um, as well as life coaching and relationship coaching, um, and functioning homes, like cleaning out homes. Um, the hoarding has to stop. The, the blocked energy in homes has to stop. Um, you know, we, all that has to stop. So, um, products, clothing, services, and virtual events. Um, so the next, uh, well, I guess it's the first time that I'm doing it in this way is the second or third one I've done. Um, but it's called Sunday tea. Sunday tea. Um, so we're going to do a virtual version of Sunday tea on November 22nd. Uh, Sunday tea is very similar to like, the podcast, except for it's very specific about spirituality. Um, it's where we come, sip your tea, um, and get your spirit fed, um, and, and deal with issues of the spirit, like yeah. specifically. Um, it's not about necessarily anyone's belief system. I personally like follow Buddhism more than anything and the Zen and Taoism, mm -hmm. um, like Ifa and different, like, African spirituality that's based in nature does resonate with me but as far as practical tips Buddhism is what helped me um, so I kind of am an alchemist in the sense that I bring all those insights into Sunday Tea um, and the topic for November 22nd is going to be surviving the holidays um, because you know that's a whole thing in itself family trauma seasonal depression COVID um, just the uncertainty of the world planning for 2021 it's a bunch of shit that's coming along with this holiday season um, so preparing your spirit for that is really important so Sunday tea on November 22nd is going to be specifically about that um, you'll have to join uh, our Patreon to participate in that um so that's that. That's it. That's the next virtual event. Future, future event. We're going to do like a twerk fitness class for the ladies, but that's future. Cause I'm not ready for that right now. Um, <laughs> I'm not in the mood for it to twerk right now. Um, except for like when we're, Oh yeah, that's on camera. <laughs> that's on camera. <laughs> Anywho, um, so yeah, that's all I got as far as that. So if you uh, have any questions, topic ideas, um, you want to be a guest on the show, um, you want to promo your products, services, you know, whatever you got going on, music submissions. Yeah. All of that, um, please send it through to authentichippy at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, we're excited to just connect with you all to build community um, and really just have like honest, transparent conversations yeah. and all that jazz. Yeah. Yeah, it's about that time. Let's keep it real and let's be real with one another. So 
listen, if y'all want to reach me, I'm on IG with it, Sartholonius, S-I-R-T-H-E-L-O-N as in Nook, I-O-U-S, Facebook, Selah Ross, S-E-L-A-H-R-O-S-S. Uh, you can check out my website, Sartholonius.com. Uh, you can email me at Sartholonius at Gmail for photography, videography, uh, consultation, just have a nice and straight talk, one-on-one talk. My brothers out there, if y'all just need like some big brother talk or like some black man to black man talk let me know uh women if y'all need some advice i'm gonna shoot you right over to my lady you feel me uh <laughs> but yeah it's all love it's as many ways that you can keep in contact with us put it anywhere and then reach you out um authentic hippie at gmail.com as i mentioned before um my instagram is empress mufasa bastet um you can text us 347-998-8903 if you just need somebody to talk to again i know that rona this covid this political climate um it's not this isn't an easy time and i don't i know that you know, especially as black people, we are, we normalize being strong. And I'm someone that had to like, I'm still working through that <laughs> where like everything just because you can carry, it doesn't mean that it's easy to carry and it doesn't mean that you have to carry it. So if you just need someone to talk to, um, definitely text us, um, give us a call. If you want to talk to me specifically or him specifically, um, again, three, four, seven, nine, nine, eight, eight, nine, zero, three. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm pretty easy to, to reach. I answer all my DMs on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I do too when I'm on social media. So I'm back on social media, like for real, for real. So yeah, it just hit me. Yeah, I'm, I'm easy, easily accessible. Word. So the audio for the podcast is going to be streaming on definitely Spotify, definitely Apple Music. Um, and then if you want to check out the video to see the video of it, um, it'll be on YouTube for the very beginning and then it will shift over to Patreon once we get that all set up and lined up. Indeed, indeed. Sounds good. Did you have fun? I did. This was cool. This was definitely cool. So we're going to definitely be doing the live streams um, in this way um, at least once a month. If we get frisky, we might jump to twice a month. Oh, no, no, no. It's going to be twice a month yeah, because yeah. it's the first or no, the second. No, what did you say? Is it the second and the third? For this month. Yeah. So the next time we're going live is November 30th, and we already have our guests like confirmed or not. Oh, and that's to confirm. He's boy, confirmed? The ism. We going to talk about house music in Newark and all that. Yeah, jazz. so our, our next guest, it's okay. So he said it so I can say it. So yeah, yeah I'm really excited to have ism. Um, so. I love house music, love Afro house, mm-hmm. love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love Jersey Club, like Baltimore, like just New Orleans bounce. Like I love, love that high energy, high vibration of music. Um, and I really haven't heard new music. I haven't heard new music. And I thought that coming to Jersey with my man, it would be like house music, Jersey Club. And he's like, no, like, it's done. And I'm like, what? What happened? But then I saw the the Lincoln Music Festival that you DJed and Ism performed. I'm like, oh, no, he's going in. Hold on. So House is like, we're trying to bring it back? Come on. So I want to dance. So... (laughs) <laughs> so I'm excited to have Ism to talk to him about it, um, to have those conversations about house music, um, about Newark, because I want to learn more about Newark. Um, am I saying it right? Newark? No. 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 I can't say it. Newark. No. Newark. All right. So that's that's what we got for the next episode. Um, the live stream will be on November 30th. Um, and then, you know, we'll release it as we plan to release it. Indeed, indeed. Lastly, please check me out on all musical platforms at Sir Thelonious. Oh, yeah. They got music. He's good. That's one of the things that got me. That's a fact. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're done. Indeed. We're out. Love y'all. Peace this is Liddy in the city. Peace, peace.